I have to admit, your boy was wrong. I was wrong all along, but nonetheless, I'm back here again after two months to set the record straight because the M1 Mac Mini is... <gasps> So it's been about two months now since I caught the M1 Mac Mini. Wow, no pro fresh in the house. 16 to 8 gigabytes. Tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good. If it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see. Hold up. Performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go. Let's go. No overheating. Got grace the jigs up. Best desktop. I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through the shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar live to your stereo. <laughs> All right, so y'all see the title of this video, I was wrong. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. No waiting, none of that, man. The M1 Mac Mini, after having it now for about two months since its first day of release is absolute fire. But first thing before we actually get into all of that, I want you guys right now, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to comment down below the number of likes that is currently on this video at the time of you watching right now. And for those that did, go ahead and also hit that like button. And I got something for you guys a little later in this video. So definitely make sure you guys keep watching. Now, although there's a lot of good things and I want to actually start off by talking to some of the issues that I personally face with the M1 Mac Mini. So there are a lot of drawbacks and I want to talk about that from my personal experience first I have to start with the Bluetooth issues did they fix this on this machine so recently after some updates Apple had pushed to their machines I wanted to go ahead and check it out for myself see if they actually fixed those issues that I had when I first got the machine so I took out the USB dongle that I personally have connected to my keyboard as well as my mouse and I used the Logitech MS master as well as the MS keys for my computer I instantly started noticing the same issues persist mainly with my mouse it would literally just stutter across the screen then it would randomly just disconnect the keyboard as well as my mouse but as soon as I plugged back in the Logitech dongle it worked no problem now Apple did release a statement saying that they are aware of the Bluetooth issues that they currently have on their machines and that they are working for a fix that will get pushed sooner than later but I'm actually hoping that this is a software issue and not necessarily a hardware issue because that would just be no bueno. The next drawback I have with this machine, and honestly, to be honest, it's not that big of a deal, but it is an issue that I wanted to bring up nonetheless. Now, in the past, with the Mac Minis, you did have the option to be able to literally go into the back of these machines and just really upgrade the RAM. That way, you could do it yourself, and it was literally a whole lot cheaper to go that route than to purchase it through Apple. But in this version here of the Mac Mini, they pretty much just took that completely out of the user's hand, and you're not able to do that with this machine. Now, the only reason that I'm bringing this up y'all is because Apple only offers a eight gigabyte RAM option as well as a 16 gigabyte RAM option. So when you guys are making a purchase, you really need to understand that decision at the time of purchase because you will not be able to upgrade later on your own like we were able to do in the past on these machines. So I'll say what I actually said in those videos and if you can check those out down in the description below, if you have the budget to go ahead and buy higher RAM options, then definitely make sure you guys do that because it is better for longevity. But the eight gigabyte RAM version as of right now of this video with my two month review of using it has actually been really good and I haven't had any major problems with it at all. Now, I will say in the future, I am hoping that Apple decides to come out with a 32 gig option because that would just be ideal. I know it would be pricier because you already know how Apple is when it comes to upgrading storage and all of that type of stuff, but I think it will still be ideal. Another issue that I have with my M1 Mac Mini is the limited number of ports. Now it does work with my current setup, but that is because I had to buy this CalDigit USB hub that give me extra ports that I needed. But on the back, you only get two Thunderbolt ports instead of the four which I wish that it actually had, which I feel like would be much better and more useful to users like myself. Because let's say you wanna go ahead and do a dual monitor setup like you guys are seeing behind me, then you use those Thunderbolt ports. Then just like that, you're already out of your USB-C ports to leverage on your machine. Now, on my current setup that you guys see, I use one display port as well as one of the HDMI to connect it to the back of the Mac Mini. But if it just had two HDMI ports, then I could have just used that instead. So I just feel like the management of ports was not the best decision from Apple in this situation on this machine. Now the ideal situation guys would have been four Thunderbolt ports and two HDMI ports. I know that's probably a lot and I'm asking for a lot and hopefully Apple can give us that in the future. Now that we pretty much got all the cons out of the way, let's go ahead and dive deep 
deep into the pros of this machine and some of the things that I personally like. Now, the first thing I have to talk about is the size of this machine and how that is important. Let me tell you guys why. So y'all see this desk that's behind me, right? Now, before I had so much stuff up here and y'all could watch my video where I did my desk tour and I showed you guys everything in that video on how much stuff was actually up there. Well, because of the M1 Mac Mini, I literally took majority of that stuff down because I legit didn't really need it because this machine, guys, is a beast and is a huge space saver. Just look at how much space I actually have on this desk now that I've taken that off. The next thing I've been testing out for you guys is performance from a long-term perspective. Now, the one that I have here that you guys are seeing is the eight gigabyte RAM version. Now, I know what you guys are saying out there to yourself in my last M1 video. Well, see kid, didn't you say the 16 gigabyte RAM version is the way to go? Yes, I did say that and I still believe that, but based on my personal budget and how much I wanted to spend, I stuck it out with the eight gigabyte RAM version to really see how good the Apple M1 chip really is. And let me tell you guys, the eight gigabyte RAM version is B status. So much that literally when I'm able to do it, all of the computers that's gonna be in the studio here is gonna be on the new Apple M1 chips because they are really that good. It's fast, it's reliable, it's quick, and it just handles everything perfectly. So when I upgraded to the M1 Mac Mini, this was the first thing that I personally noticed about it was how quiet it was. Let me put things into perspective on how much this machine is able to actually handle. Mainly the reason why I purchased Macs is because I'm a content creator, right? And I need something that is powerful as well as integrates well within an ecosystem. Let me give you guys perspective real quick. All of my, Stop it. <laughs> All of my videos that you guys see here on the channel are in 4K. They also are edited on this machine right here. If you don't know what 4K video files are, they are extremely large video files and it takes a lot of processing computing power to be able to handle it. I'm not about to get all super techie on y'all, but you get my point, it requires a lot of power. When I'm editing my videos, either in Premiere Pro or if I'm editing in Final Cut Pro, depending on you know my usages and whatnot, y'all, it slices through footage, especially in Final Cut Pro, like butter, like a champ, like a knife through bread, like scissors through paper. You get my point? It's fast. <laughs> so far, it's been able to handle anything that I've been able to throw at it. And trust me, guys, I've thrown everything at this thing, including the kitchen sink, and that's big. And I'm talking connecting multiple ultra wide monitors, having tabs open, all of that different type of stuff, video editing, photo editing, music production, like the rap that you guys heard in the intro of this video, gaming, and even live streaming, y'all. Yep. It can handle all of that too. Now, it's not perfect because of the issues that I spoke about earlier in this video, but I have to talk about the applications operating on Apple's Big Sur and being Apple Silicon compatible. Now, I will say that there's still companies updating their software to be compatible, but mainly all of the ones that people typically will use with a machine like this, they're already up to speed in just a short two months. For example, Chrome browser has an Apple Silicon version that is optimized specifically for this machine. Adobe products like Premiere, Photoshop, all of those are up to date except Photoshop is a little finicky here and there because it still crashes and some reason whenever I want to close it out it legit freezes up my machine then I have to do the whole force close command on it but pretty much everything that you guys typically will use on a Mac you can still use it on this machine and it is up to date now when it comes to storage and how well that is going for me now I told you guys in my previous videos that I'll have down below for you guys that you guys should not buy the spec out storage option because it's too expensive and that you can get external storage for a whole lot cheaper this still stands for me today so I ended up buying this external USB dock that has a hidden SSD slot on the inside for you guys to be able to purchase your own SSD to experience expand your storage and it works perfectly. Now I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below. So what I did was I bought the 512 gig option and saved myself some bread because I never save anything on my internal storage of my machines. Reason being is because clogging up your internal storage with junk files as well as video files can extremely impact the speed and performance of your machine, which is why I always tell people don't do it. Let me say this again, get external drives because saving stuff on your internal storage can impact the speed performance in the long run if you don't manage it properly. And most people out there, you ain't managing that storage properly anyway on what you guys are saving to your machines. So I also bought an external drive for me to be able to save things on so that I can work from. I'll also include those down in the description section below, a couple ones that I personally recommend that you guys check out. But trust me, buy the cheapest storage option that Apple has to offer and save yourself some money on the machine, get it in house, then you guys can buy some external drives. That way you will still come out on top in the savings money department. But even with the pros and cons that I've shared in this 
video, do I think the M1 Mac mini is worth their money at this time? Like if you were looking to buy a computer, I would say yes, give the M1 Mac mini a huge, and I mean a huge consideration if you are wanting a desktop like experience into the Apple ecosystem and don't want to necessarily shut out a whole lot of money, but you still want that same high power fluent Apple experience. I have to admit guys, this machine here guys is an absolute beast where it comes to handling all of the things that I use a computer for, like watching content, watching YouTube, uh, normal web browsing, video editing, photo editing, music production, it can handle it all no problem. So I think if you guys was to pick this up, I think you'll be happy with it and what you guys bought and not really having that buyer's remorse feeling like we have when we buy certain products. So remember I talked about that setup that I want you guys to check out. Let me show you guys right now the $5,000 Ultimate M1 Mac Mini setup that you must see and that video starts right now. Back. Now welcome to the setup, yep. rocking dual monitors now, just watch the glow up, okay. ultra wide 34, HDR say no more, cop me a new mic, all black, watch the dance floor smooth.